presentation on bulk bag unloading do's and don'ts. Uh, my name is Brad Schultz, and I want to start out with, I've made some really horrible predictions in my past, and uh, one of them is nobody's ever going to pay for bottled water. Um, I would have lost this bet, and uh, I, I tell a funny story, I, I recently got remarried and uh, have some kids that didn't necessarily grow up with me. And uh, during the summer last year, we were all out in the yard working and it was really hot and everybody was getting thirsty. So I walked over and I turned on the hydrant and I got out my the garden hose and I started to drink out of it. And you'd think I killed the cat. Uh, did not realize that you can only drink water at our house out of the refrigerator or out of a bottle. Uh, it doesn't come anywhere else. I would have lost that bet. Uh, I also swore up and down that I would never ever use this but to call my kids and talk to them. And uh, I was wrong. The only way I can get a hold of him nowadays is to send a text message. So, too bad prediction. Uh, the last prediction I made, which was really, really wrong, was 20 some years ago I stood up at a meeting and I said, quit messing with both bags. They're a temporary thing. Don't invest the time and money. Go somewhere else. It's a fad. Uh, the reality is, we build a lot of both bag unloaders. As a matter of fact, it's the largest growing segment of our business for the last five or six years. Um, we build a lot of bulk bag unloaders. Here's bulk bag unloaders feeding a pneumatic conveying system. Bulk bag unloaders, uh, another facility feeding a pneumatic system. Uh, this is bulk bag unloaders feeding into what we call a hockey puck, mechanical system. Bulk bag unloaders feeding into a weight system. Bulk bag unloaders being used as loss and weight feeders over a drag conveyor and unloaders with loss and weight filters, feeders built right into them. Um, we really have bulk bag unloaders put into two different uh, scenarios. Uh, we're unloading bulk bags into what we call a gravity discharge situation, where we're either dropping into a mechanical conveyor, a pit, or a volumetric feeder, just right out of the bag, possibly even into a hole in the ground, but into something where there's no air flows to worry about. Or, because we're Magnum Systems, and we do pneumatic conveying systems, a lot of our unloaders go right into our pneumatic system. Talking about unloading a bulk bag into a gravity situation, um, a lot of times what we see is the mentality of well, what could be easier. You, you hang a bag up in the air, you untie it, you let it flow out. As a matter of fact, here's an email I got just last week from a customer. I need a bulk bag unloader for 1,400 pounds, drop it right into the small spot in the ground, and I've got nine foot four inches to deal with. Um, here's the problem. Bolt bag and loaders start at 16 feet. Um, it's real simple. The bag is so tall, the straps are so tall, and the human is so tall. So you factor that into the whole thing, the very minimum we're always talking about is 16 feet. Um, here's a couple pictures that show gravity unloading. And what I want to point out here is that in these two pictures, the one on the left, limited ceiling height. And you can tell that the untie box, the guy's going to have to get on his knees to get down there to untie the bags here. On this one, the guy's got to get into a ladder to get up there and untie it. So both situations are less than desirable um, and it's something that people don't think about when they're unloading a bulk bag. Um, more common for us is unloading into a pneumatic conveying system. And uh, here's a picture of four bulk bag unloaders that are dropping into a pneumatic conveying line. Um, stepping backwards just a little bit, when you have a pneumatic conveying system, you really have two types. You either have a pressure system, which this is, which is a blower, silo, or whatever blowing the multiple destination. Perfect application for pressure. Single pickup, multiple destinations. A simple vacuum system is usually multiple pickup points to a common destination. So any pneumatic conveying system is going to be one or the other, a pressure system or a vacuum system. And if you have to put a bulk bag and loader into that system, you would think, in your mind, you'd say, on a pressure system, that's where I would put it, at the beginning of the system, because I'm trying to blow product to the destination. Or in the vacuum system, I would put it on the vacuum side of things and say, that's where I want to discharge the product. 
problem with, with that application of a pressure system is this right here. Anytime you have a pressure system, you have blow by air through a rotary valve. And in a silo situation, the blow by air is actually a good thing. All of the air goes up through the product, keeps it fluidized, and keeps it flowing. The problem is here on a bulk bag unloader is that you still have blow by air, but it comes out everywhere. So you're trying to take a bag, drop it into a pan, and untie it and get it to flow, and you've got dust going everywhere. So this is a problem. Um, unloading of a vacuum system, though, we don't have any blow by air. So when you don't have any blow by air, you're just simply feeding it into the product nice and clean. Um, this is a good, like I said, I use this picture again, but this is a picture showing a great application with bulk bag and loaders down a vacuum system. The nice thing about this is, is you add ingredients to your process, you just simply keep stringing them down the line. So uh, bulk bag and loaders on vacuum systems, best way to go. Um, can we put a bulk bag and loader on a pressure system? The answer is yes, but it has some very major drawbacks. And like I said, we have to deal with this blow by air right here. So to deal with that, you have a feeder right here dropping the product into the line and you have an airlock up here. So that as all the blow by air comes up, it has to go up against that valve and comes out and goes through this filter. So what you've changed though, is that that untie box now becomes 10 feet off the ground. You have to buy extra equipment. Extra equipment mean an extra airlock. I have to buy this. I have to buy this. I have to have a filter that I have to maintain and make height for. And I have to have a fan. And I have to have an access platform. It basically drives the cost of my bulk bag and loader into twice what it would have cost to do it just as a vacuum system. So. That's the other thing right there. That, that unit right there, by the time we're said and done, is 25 to 30 foot tall. Um, can I do a bulk bag and loader in a pressure system? Yes. Can I deal with all those things is the question. So some other considerations is, we really manufacture bulk bag and loaders in two configurations. One is loaded with a fork truck, and the other one is loaded with a hoist and trolley. With that hoist and trolley either integral to our frame or supplied by the customer. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions with bulk bag and loaders and fork truck loaded units is they save height. And like I mentioned earlier, go backwards one second here. The height to the top of the straps is fixed and that untie box is fixed. So even though the biggest misconception is that it saves me height to do without a hoist and trolley, the reality is, is it doesn't. And this is the reason. The fork truck still has to have a mask and uh, the, the uh, forks on there and that guard right there, that eats up more height than a hoist and trolley does. And uh, let me show you a quick video. It also requires a lot more people to operate because with this right here, you've got a fork truck operator and usually you have to either get down and go over and hang the bag or you have to have somebody else do it. Um, people think that the money they save by not doing a hoist and trolley uh, saves you anything. It really doesn't. It's offset by all of this labor that has to come with it. So, I'm also going to point out another thing here when he goes to set it in the cradle. You can see that the height there. to the, this in a second, but here is our standard unloader with a hoist and trolley. Um, this is the type of unloader that, that we sell the most of, and the biggest reason is that it's a lot cleaner to change bags. Um, there's one person that walks over to there and raises the bag up, pulls it off of there, brings it down, and hooks the next bag up. If you have that one operator that's doing that, he's responsible for that. If you have a fork truck operator that comes in and grabs the bag and lifts it up, chances are they have not gone in there and tied the bag off. 
Uh, so he just grips it and runs, and he leaves a mess across the floor. Um, again, I talked about the operator being in control. He raises it up at the speed he wants to. He brings it over, puts it in position, brings it down, and you can actually reach inside the box, get the spout, pull it down as he lets the bag down. The fork truck, you can't do that. Uh, I mentioned this cleaner bag changes. Again, I'll harp on it again. An operator doing this job, running the bag on and off of there is so much cleaner than a fork truck operated. The other thing is, is like right here, I'm not waiting for a fork truck. Now when that bag runs empty, the operator goes over there and he raises it up, gets the last little bit out, brings it over, brings it down, and he's already got the next bag up and in there. Too many times do we have the problem of, I need a fork truck, I need somebody to go get something and I don't have it. Um, again, cleaner bag changes, I keep harping on it, I'll harp on it again. The last little bit of material always sits in the corners of the bag. If you have a human that goes over with a hoisted trolley, he raises that bag up a couple little notches, gets the last little bit out, then he ties it off and pulls it off. If you have the fork truck on there, he just simply comes over and grabs it, and as soon as he raises it up, all the crap falls out. So, now, there are applications that I would tell you that the hoisted trolley by others is a good application. This is one. Uh, what this does, you have to have two hoisted trolleys, or two hoists up there, you untie and get this bag flowing. This guy comes over here, he gets the next bag ready. When that bag's empty, he runs it off over this direction, brings the next one up, sets it in. And then over here, he goes back and forth. Remove that box right there and he has bags on each end. And that way he can just sit there and unload one after the other after the other. But you never ever can use this trolley for anything else. It's only used for the bulk bag and loading. It can never let go of the bag. So. The other thing bulk bag and loaders are used for is deweighing devices. This is a great application. You can see the load cells on all of the unloaders. You actually hang a bag up in here, pull a product, you tear the scale out, and then through a rotary valve, we discharge onto this drag conveyor a certain number of pounds to make whatever batches we want. So this is a very good application. What I don't like about this one is this, this one right here is waste and trolley. The other one I video showed fork truck. The fork truck um, that's the danger in fork truck loading of a bulk bag and loader sitting on scales. Because all it takes is one lazy fork truck operator or not paying attention and you damage your load cells. Um, the other thing here is, looking at these, just be careful of your accuracy and what happens when you run out of a product and you still have to continue to make a D-way. You need 400 pounds but your bag only had 200 in it. How you deal with getting that bag off getting the next bag on and getting going is always going to be a problem. So um, I also question this right here, type of feeder and fingers. I have rotary valves here and I have an untie box there. Two things are bad there. I have a human that can stick his hands down inside and get to lose a finger, but also a bulk bag and loaders have strings and spouts. And those strings tend to hang down a long ways and get caught in feeders. So um, in summary, Always use bulk bag and loaders in vacuum systems if all possible. Any money you spend on a hoist and trolley is worth the money. And bulk bag and loaders are always taller than you think they're going to be.